Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghuveer. In this class, we will discuss about K-means clustering. It's an unsupervised machine learning model. In our first classes, we discussed about different types of machine learning models, supervised, unsupervised, and uh, reinforcement learning models. Uh, and later we discussed about different uh, supervised learning models what are the all the different supervised learning models uh, now we are discussing about unsupervised learning models so please follow our playlist from the beginning so that you will have a better understanding of the complete uh, machine learning concepts the link for the playlist is provided in the description below so before going into the concept of k means clustering k means clustering is an unsupervised learning model before going into the concept of k means clustering first we will just refresh the concepts of unsupervised learning so when we call it as unsupervised learning that we will refresh the concept then we go to k means clustering in our previous classes when we discussed about different machine learning supervised models so the data set looks like this in that we are having a data set of input and output so here bill amount salary is the input tip amount is the output so based on this output we define different loss functions and we are trying to minimize the loss here the output is helping us to identify the minimum loss that's why this output is supervising us in identifying the minimum loss that's why we call it as supervised machine learning models but in our unsupervised machine learning models we don't have this output that's why there is no one here to supervise us to find the minimum loss that's why we call it as a unsupervised machine learning models so in which situations we get this type of data only input data let's take two examples in unsupervised learning model we are having only input so let's take an example customers who buy similar products let's take a supermarket in that supermarket the customers come in and they will buy products the new customer come in and he will buy products like that if someone you ask you to identify the customers that belongs that are buying the same products so we are having only input here the data consists of only the list of products bought by this customer so we don't have any output to supervise this this kind of situation we call it as unsupervised learning let's take one more example in the image suppose if you take a picture of an elephant identifying similar pixels in the image that's a unsupervised machine learning model if you identify the similar pixels means if you take the picture the background will have the some set of pixels and the elephant will have similar kind of picture pixels so if you identify the similar pixels pixels and group them we can identify the object on the image where the elephant is the similar similar pixels are grouped together we can identify the object where the elephant is that is the use of unsupervised learning in images this is one of the use there are many uses okay so these are the examples for unsupervised learning model so now coming to k means clustering model in this class we'll take a simple example usually the data sets are not this much simple like this when what we are showing here for understanding purpose we have chosen a simple data set in two dimensional coordinate system but you have to take that in n dimensional where we cannot visualize this so you have to think in the direction how to identify so all the remaining concepts which are uh, so here we will discuss about how to how k means clustering works so what are the disadvantages in which situations on which type of data sets this k means clustering works good all those concepts we will discuss in our next classes so this is our data set this is a two dimensional coordinate system these are the points uh, data points plotted like this so our assumption is uh, you are following from the beginning that's why because you know so our assumption is you already know how to plot these points so these are the points data points in our system so here we have to identify the similar clusters clusters means a group of points so that is the main goal of k means clustering we have to identify the similar values so by looking at this data set what we can observe we can observe that these points comes to one cluster these points comes to another cluster like that these points comes to third cluster so we can identify three groups of points so three clusters can be identified but usually we cannot visualize the data so don't forget that point 
So here K means, K means clustering, K means uh, how many clusters we are identifying. Uh, we are identifying here three clusters. How to identify that K, K value without visualizing the data. That we will understand in our next classes. So here we will understand how K means clustering works. So our assumption here is our K value is uh, three. We have to identify three clusters. So, okay. Uh, so. So how our k-means clustering works means uh, these are the steps followed by k-means clustering. Uh, so what's our first step is uh, randomly select uh, three points, usually k points. Here we selected k as a uh, three value. So that's why we have to select randomly. We call those points as centroids. Uh, so what we have first step is we have to randomly select uh, k points. Here our k value is a uh, three value. That's why we are selecting three points. Let's assume that uh, assume that we have selected points like this C1, C2 and C3. So these are the points which we selected randomly and these are the points. So what we have to do next is uh, for each point, uh, each point means uh, we call this randomly selected points as centroids for each point means here data point uh, these black points are we call it as data points uh, for each point we have to calculate the nearest distance uh, xi comma cj cj means centroid j how many centroids we are having uh, three centroids out of those three centroids which one is the nearest one that is what we have to identify let's take this point let's take this point this point distance uh, if you calculate the distance these two points we can use euclidean distance we can use manhattan distance uh, here we are using a uh, euclidean distance square root of x1 minus x2 whole square that's the equation for euclidean distance we discussed these distances in our previous classes so calculate the distance so this point to this one so we have to calculate the same way c here to c2 the same way here to third point uh, so which one is having the minimum distance c1 c2 and c3 which one is having c1 so this point belongs to c1 centroid c1 so yes c1 means set of points that belongs to centroid c1 so this point assume that this point is l1 l1 belongs to centroid c1 like that same way we repeat and calculate the nearest distance nearest centroid to all the points so sc1 consist of some set of points some set of points l1 l2 l8 l9 like that sc2 consist of some set of points l15 like that so on we are, we have divided all our points to three groups so some set of points belongs to sc1 some set of points belongs to sc2 some set of points belongs to third set so let's assume that these are the points which are nearest to c1 and these are the points that's nearest to C2 and these are the points that nearest to third point, third cluster. So what we have to do next is a uh, third point, uh, compute centroids. We have to calculate the centroids again. So how to calculate the centroids is uh, all these points belongs to cluster C1. All these points belongs to cluster C1. So calculating centroid Cj is equal to here J is equal to 1 sigma xi means summation of all the points that belongs to set c1 so the points that belongs to these points all the points belongs to c1 summation of sum them and divided by number of points in sj means we are calculating the mean of all the points that's it simply saying it is the mean of all the points how to calculate is for suppose these are the five data points we have in in set sc1 how to calculate mean is 1 plus 2 plus 5 plus 1 plus 2 so x values sum them are all the values sum all the values what's the value will get for suppose we got 11 11 divided by how many points we have five points are there 11 by 5 is the x coordinate for the centroid we are calculating the mean value the same way calculate the mean for y 2 plus 5 plus 6 plus 1 plus 2 divided by 5 that's the centroid value we got the, that is how we calculate the mean value of all the points that belongs to this cluster and that is considered as the next centroid the new point which we got after calculating the mean that we call it as next centroid if you calculate the mean of this value sir the centroid changes from c1 to c 
So we use a new pen. So assume that this is the new centroid. The same way if you calculate this C2 moves to somewhere around here. The same way C3 moves to somewhere around here. Okay, we calculated the new centroids. Again, repeat the second and third point. Uh, so we have to calculate the distance again, distance of each data point uh, with new centroids, uh, with new centroids uh, and calculate the new centroids again. Like that we have to repeat this step, repeat second and third step uh, till convergence. Convergence means if no new data points has been assigned to our CIZ, SCI data set, uh, SCI set. We call it a set. If a new data point has been arrived means again we have to calculate the new centroid like that till convergence, till convergence no new points has to be added. So again if you calculate this, see here C2 came here, these two points goes to new set. Usually these two points are previously these two belongs to C1. Now these two points move to C2 because it is nearest to C2 means new points added to C2. So convergence means uh, if no new points added to our set uh, C2 then we converge to the situation that is how we identify the so usually at the end we will get like this these points belongs to C1 these points belongs to C2 these points belongs to C3 that is how we calculate the centroids and uh, the cluster values. This set of points we call it as one cluster, this set of points we call it as another cluster, the third set we call it as third cluster. That is how we calculate the cluster values. This is how k-means clustering works. Okay, what's the disadvantages? There are so many disadvantages in this. All those concepts we will discuss in our next classes. Hope you understand the concept. If you have any questions regarding the concept, please post your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you.